Thanks, Steve. It's a pleasure to be here today. Who hasn't been frustrated when they can't find that important bit of information? Wouldn't it be great to have a simple tool like Google to search across all the information that you might need in your daily life? We call that a personal federated search engine. One that knows who you are as the user, or in my case, as a family physician, and can search across all the databases that you need. That's what I'm going to talk about today, the need for that kind of tool in healthcare and how we're trying to solve that problem. We live in an information age, one in which the information is growing exponentially. There's an estimated three billion terabytes of data out there. That's equal to three zettabytes. That's a three followed by 21 zeros. So needless to say, lots, a big number. So in healthcare, there's about 700,000 articles added to the biomedical literature every year. As a physician, I can't keep up with all that information. I mean, there's new knowledge being created on a daily basis. And we all know about information overload. Just look at your email inbox. And with too much information, that can be bad. The value can actually go down. So, we need I mean, an example of that, uh, especially when you start looking at less reliable sources. For example, Wikipedia. It's so easy to retrieve information from, but doctors are now starting to use that instead of the best evidence-based sources out there to find answers to their questions. So we need better information management and search tools to curate the most valuable sources that are out there and reverse this devaluation trend. So who said it has become increasingly difficult to keep abreast of the reports which accumulate day after day, one can suffocate through the exposure to the massive body of rapidly growing information. It was a German surgeon from 140 years ago. <laughs> so if doctors were overwhelmed and had lots of questions back in the 1870s, what must it be like today? Well, there's some great research from some medical informatics uh, folks in, in, in the industry, and I want to share with you some of the research that they've pulled together. In 2008, there was 1.1 billion visits to a doctor's office. A lot of those patients think that their doctor must have all the answers. Unfortunately, that's not reality. One of the most cited sources estimates that there's two clinical questions for every three patients that a doctor sees. A good clinical question might be, I'm seeing this patient in clinic, I wonder if drug A or drug B might be better for them. And so if there's two questions for every three patients seen, that's 750 million clinical questions every year in the US in doctor's offices. Unfortunately, 75% of those questions go unanswered. That means there's 550 million unanswered questions by the doctors. And the two most cited reasons why that's the case is because one, the doctor didn't have time to look for the answer, or two, they didn't think an answer actually existed even though that's not the case. When an answer is pursued, or the answer is provided to the clinician, 50% of the time they said, you know what, that would have actually changed my management of the patient's care. And so that means that there's 275 million opportunities for improved decision making in doctor's offices in the US every year. Another way to put that means one out of every four visits to the doctor could have, better, could have resulted in better care if you had had access to relevant information. Unfortunately, the problem's worse. I mentioned the 750 million clinical questions that doctors have, or three quarters of a billion questions. One study showed that doctors had twice as many organizational type questions. Those might, an example of that might be, I need to admit this patient to the hospital, I wonder who's on call, so I need to call them. So that means that there's 1.5 billion organizational questions. Same study showed that there's three and a half times more patient specific questions. An example of that might be, I wonder when the last time this patient had a colonoscopy. So now we can see that there's over five billion questions that doctors have in their office setting each year in the US. Doctors only make up about 7% of the healthcare workforce. What about the other providers? And also, doctor, this was just in their office setting. We also work in the hospital, nursing homes, and other places as well. And the same study showed that nurses actually had three and a half times more questions than the doctors, probably because there's about three and a half times more nurses than doctors. 
And doctors and nurses together combined make up about 30% of the healthcare workforce. So we could probably multiply these 20 billion information needs by three or four. I mentioned before that there's three billion terabytes of data out there. And um, Google announced in 2010 that they, their new search index make, takes up 100,000 terabytes. And so this picture really isn't a good representation of, of reality. The ice underneath the water is actually 20 to 30,000 times larger than the ice above the water. We know that Google searches Wikipedia, WebMD, PubMed, but those aren't the sources I really need to do, take care, care of patients. It's the information that's stored in the hidden web. The best clinical information is in proprietary databases, up to date, Dynamed. Institutions, medical institutions, pay millions of dollars to license this content. And then I also need to get access to organization-specific information. That would be the call schedule, um, hospital policies, things that I also need, as we saw that there's lots of those types of needs as well. And Google doesn't search those because that's on secured intranets within the organization. Thankfully, Google doesn't search your medical record. <laughs> but as your doctor, I need to. And so, and that information is stored in your electronic health record or in a health information exchange. And then don't forget about the personal information. As throughout my career, I've been collecting clinical pearls that I learned from mentors and colleagues and want to be able to access that at the point of care as well. So we, until today, we haven't had the ability, or the technology, or the standards to be able to have a tool that searches across all these data sources in the hidden web. So if we're gonna tackle this problem, we need to know what clinicians do. And so clinicians that work with patients, they have to build relationships with those patients, apply technical skill, and then manage loads of information. And so when they're, you know, we wanna know how much time are they actually spending managing that information. We know that knowledge workers or clinicians can spend upwards of 35% of their time just looking for information. And so if informa poor information management is part of the healthcare problem today, what does the solution look like? I wanted to show a picture of a, uh, a patient and, and a patient that came in a couple years ago, 60-year-old female, and I asked her, you're over 60, you should get the shingles vaccine. She said, well, I actually had shingles and um, I don't want to get that again, it was very painful. And so I've got a patient-specific question that I need to ask, and that's has she actually ever gotten it? She doesn't think she got it, but I'd like to look in her record and find out. So now I can actually search within her medical record across hundreds of documents that are in her chart and quickly find that there's the instance of when she came in a couple years ago and I can see that even then she recalled not getting the vaccination. And then eventually we're gonna hook this up to the health information exchanges so that even if she went to another healthcare institution, I could be able to find that information and get the answer to my question and feel pretty confident that no, she's not had the vaccine because she couldn't remember for sure if she did or not. And then we can also search across um, with, our, our, with our system, MedSocket, of the, about 175 of the best curated sources for medical information. And so now I've got a clinical question. A patient that's had shingles before, should they still get the vaccine? And so the search results come up. I can see that there's a link to CDC. I go to the website, talks about who should get the vaccine, and I can get my answer pretty quickly, that even if you've had shingles before, you, should still, you could still get the shot to try to prevent future occurrences of the disease. But then the patient always asks, will my insurance cover it? And most doctors don't even want to try to answer that question. <laughs> and to be honest, we've tried. And our staff would take tons of time trying to make phone calls to the insurance company. My nurse would take time. And so we built new knowledge. And we're trying to crowdsource new knowledge development. And with that, we posted it on our secured intranet. And I can quickly find that answer. And so I can see the patient, if they have Coventry insurance, they work for the university, they're over 60, yes, they can get the vaccine and it'll be covered. The patient's ecstatic, we get them the, the, the shot. So I just have one more question to leave you with. 50, or 67, 67 year old Tony LaRussa, manager of the St. Louis Cardinals, missed a week of games at the beginning of the 2011 baseball season. Cardinals lost most of those games when he was gone. And if you remember, the Cardinals barely made it into the playoffs, came down to the last game of the season, ended up winning the World Series. And so my question is, why did the Cardinals almost miss a trip to the World Series? And I'm gonna come back to that in a second. I just want to uh, thank you for the opportunity and say please support federated search tools like MedSocket, open standards like InfoButton, 
so that you can get better care as a patient and your doctor can take better care of you. And don't forget to get your shingles vaccine if you're over 60. So, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.